folks, we want to welcome you to the ministry of Upper Kings Clear Baptist Church. Uh, we are so glad and delighted for just a privilege God has given us to be able to bring the Word of God to our hearts, uh, to those who are not able to join with us uh, physically, but we want to thank you for uh, being a part of this uh, church and this service. Um, whether you're viewing it online or whether you're able to come and join with us uh, physically. We want to begin with uh, just a word of prayer in preparation of our hearts before we look into the word of God today. So would you bow with me for a word of prayer as we come before our great God and Father. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. We come in your presence again to thank you for the blessings blessings of being in this part of the world. Father, you have kept us in a wonderful part of the world. Father, we are so blessed to be in New Brunswick. And thank you, Father, that we have not had to face a major onslaught by this COVID-19. We know it is around us. We know it is uh, in parts of our province. But we want to thank you, Lord, that we have not suffered a major devastation that we have seen many places suffer. But yet, Lord, uh, our suffering is no smaller than those around us and those that are in other parts of the world. Uh, we know there have been families who have lost loved ones through this pandemic. And we just, dear again, we just want to remember and lift those families up. Uh, Father, we know there's a lot of suffering all around the world. And we just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy over us. And uh, we just want to pray, Father, even as we hear this week, there's been two shootings, Lord, where lives have been lost. And Father, we pray for the families of those who have lost their loved ones through this unthinkable uh, crime that has been committed. Father, we see hatred of men just swelling up and being so destructive. And Father, we just want to pray for those who have been cut down so quickly uh, because of sin that, and hate that has prevailed in the heart of men. And we just pray, Father, for your grace and for your mercy to surround many who are mourning this week this month, this year, for what has taken place. Father, we also want to pray and thank you for the leaders of our province, for the hard work they have undertaken. And sometimes, Father, we have not uh, appreciated the dr draconian measures that have been taken, but yet we know that these are men uh, Father, with great limitations, and are just doing their best to try to protect us in this province. And for that, we thank you, Lord, for giving us leaders that do care. But we do pray, Father, for wisdom for them in so many different areas as they try to bring this pandemic under control. And we pray that you would give them wisdom, Lord, even as we see that there's more and more people getting the vaccinations. We thank you for the availability of this vaccination, and we pray that this will go smoothly, and then this vaccination will be an antidote to this uh, pandemic. Thank you for your grace even there. Then, Father, we want to thank you for the faithfulness of your people who continually support the work and the ministry of this church. We want to thank you for those that have faithfully given, not only given of the resources that you put in their hands, but those that have given themselves uh, to apply their talents and gifts for the working of this church. For that, we want to thank you. And then, Father, we want to thank you for those that are faithful to not only taking part in the services but, Father, those that are taking your word and applying it to their lives. And we pray, Father, 
that the power of the world will bring change in our hearts, our mind, our spirit in this day. And Father, how much more we need to hear from you through your word. Thank you again for the grace of the freedom we have in this country that we still can carry our Bibles, that we can still read our Bibles, that we can still propagate the gospel uh, in this part of the country, Lord. For this we want to thank you. We do not want to take for granted uh, the freedom that you've given to us in this day. And we know that time is coming, Father, when that freedom will be taken away from us. So this is the day you have made and we will rejoice in you and we will be glad. And Father, we will speak your truth through our lives, through our words, through our actions. Thank you for the grace and thank you for the mercy. Now as we look into your word, Father, our desire is that you speak to us this Easter season. And Father, what a message uh, the Easter brings to us. As we look to the cross, Father, we realize the price that was paid on Calvary's cross. Now, Father, speak to us that we may hear, that we may learn, that we may follow, that we may obey. For in Jesus' name we pray. I want to take time to read uh, three uh, short passages from the Bible. As you know, I don't like uh, breaking up uh, the passages from, uh, from scriptures uh, because of time and limitations. Uh, I'm just going to do that, but I would like to again read these passages in context uh, of what we are about uh, today. First uh, passage I've taken from Isaiah 53 verse 1 uh, to verse 5, and I want to look at what Isaiah would see prophetically about our Lord Jesus Christ. And look how Isaiah writes. He seems to write it so personal, because yes, it was personal, it was going to affect them. So Isaiah 53 verse 1, Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and upon him the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Then I want to jump to uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31, God's everlasting love. Romans chapter 8, verse 31, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long, and we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The third passage I want to read is taken from Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 onwards. 
Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scourging heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every will wipe away every tear from their eyes. May God add a blessing to his word. As uh, in preparation for the message today, I thought uh, about what's happening in the world and the fear that's gripping mankind uh, because of the pandemic, because of the econ economic chaos that's come because of this pandemic, because of the restlessness among people during these days. Um, so I just pray that uh, God's word will minister to all your heart and to my heart. When we begin uh, this series, my Easter series, The Cross, A Place of Surrender, uh, the first message I talked in the shadow of the cross. Uh, my second message uh, last week, I titled it The Call of the Cross, The Call of the Cross. And my message today that I want to bring to us, to our heart, is the claim of the cross. The claim of the cross. And there are numerous selected scriptures that I have, and I will go through those scriptures as I go through my message. And just a simple message, as I begin to think, what is the claim of the cross for you, for me? For those who claim to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I thought of the word claim. You know, with uh, all that has happened, we see uh, some companies, because of this pandemic, had to cut their staff and had to uh, cut their business. And now they are trying to apply to the insurance uh, companies uh, to fill in their claims because of lost income and loss productivity and all that and I thought about the insurance claim you see we buy insurance I buy insurance for uh, my car in case I have an accident then I can put in a claim and get it covered so with that I just want to begin to just probe our minds and think about a claim um, insurance claim is needed to cover us in terms of disasters but I think you will notice, and I will notice, and I have noticed, sometimes these insurance companies are reluctant to pay up. And that can be very devastating. I know that in our area, every year, there's a lot of uh, snow and moisture. There's always flooding, and people lose their homes. And then they are told that, uh, sorry, the insurance will not cover because they are in uh, these areas. And that can be very devastating. And so I want to, to walk with you 
uh, as we think about the claim of the cross, 